three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, according to uh, Twitch, I am now on. Took about ten seconds to get there. Um, and let's go ahead and uh, look at this now. I'm um, again mostly to annoy you. I did not run the startup script ahead of time. Um, let's go ahead and do that now. And have to enter password. Whoa! Okay, that's not cool. Um. So let's see what the hell happened there. Well, let's see if that actually fixed things. It did not fix things. So let's try that one more time. And I think I probably meant to say sudo sh startup sh. That's not supposed to happen at all. One more time. Cool. Now I have no idea how I did this before. Um, oh, you know what, I think I have to do it like this because it's a uh, full path. No. <sighs> Is it just sure? No, that's gonna... Oh, you know what, this might actually be sufficient. I may not need to sudo this. Okay, so now I need to get some crap from my other machine. Some more crap. I don't know if I'm getting or giving, but, you know, whatever. Um... And hopefully, everything is now back to the way it should be. Just amazing how that works. Okay, so previously, uh, we had looked at, we were looking at this problem, and we'd run into the problem of uh, how do we know uh, whether or not the umbral cone touches the planet, uh, or how much it touches. And I think uh, what I figured out is you actually have to break this into two cases. Uh, there's a big difference uh, depending on whether the umbral cone, the, t the cone tip, is inside or outside the planet. If it's inside the planet, it's going to be a very different computation than if it's outside the planet. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, work with this. I'm going to move this Earth a little bit to the to the down, to the south, or whatever, uh, because I want to show an example where um, no part of the planet even touches the central vector. It doesn't have to for there to be an eclipse. Uh, it only has to touch the uh, one, you know, it has to be between the two vectors that determine the, the eclipse cone. So let's go ahead and do that if I can, and I might have to do some other fudging here. And I'm actually sort of curious to see whether the Mathix server restarted itself. I'd be very surprised if it did. Let's see what happens if we do this. I'll be damned. That is some good, that is some good freaking live, uh, live VM freezing there. All right, so let's go ahead and move the Earth a little bit further down. We'll have to sort of experiment here until we get it, but that might be too far down. Now, that's gorgeous. So here you can see that even though the uh, the central purple line, the one that connects the moon and the sun, uh, and I'm probably going to need a better color for the moon at some point. Um, blue moon? I don't know. Uh, there's blue, though. Um, so, yeah, and here there's still an eclipse in this area right here uh, because that part is still within the umbral cone, even though the Earth isn't within the umbral cone and so on and so forth. So in cases like this, I'm going to go ahead and draw, draw, draw a diagram. But what we really want to know is we want to know the angle between the middle line and the center of the planet, and then we can from there measure the um, the middle the um, the angles to the uh, either side of the planet. Uh, and we don't even need to put these uh, black lines in here because we could all we're worried about is the angle, and then we can compare the angles to the black line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to see if we can get two graphics things going in here at once. I will be amazed if we can. And I'm going to claim this is the general solution, so let's see if we can um, do another graphics view. I don't know if how you, um, if you're using the file, I'm not sure exactly how you can move between in one and in two. Uh, in other words, how you can move from one notebook cell to the other. So first of all, let's see if we can even duplicate this by itself like this. I want two, I want clones, I want clones. Oh, we cannot. So if we change the second one, um, let's see, we're going to get rid of the, we don't need the moon, we don't need the moon or the sun for this one, actually. Um, and we don't need the black lines. So, let's see what this does. I'm going to be unhappy if this, uh, yeah, okay. So it only shows the latest of the two graphics. 
Um, I'm not sure exactly what to do about that. Um, so if I don't think there's anyone watching, but if there is, oh my God, there is someone actually watching. I won't say your name, person who's watching, but if you have any suggestions or have any questions, comments, whatever, please do make them in chat. Okay, so it looks like um, even if I have two graphics commands, I'm not going to get two sets of graphics. So maybe th I don't think the semicolon is going to help at all, but let's see what it does. It does not help at all. And see, I think most people use this by typing stuff in, not by including a file. So that's kind of the um, one of the issues here is uh, when I include a file, I in Math even Mathematica behaves differently when you do this. Um, and the only thing I can think of is if I do a show percentage or even a print, that might force it to print the first set of graphics. Um, and no, it just prints null because that is sort of the out the output of graphics is actually null. The graphics of themselves are the ones that display. So that's not cool. Now if I do a show percentage, I might just get away with this, even though show is not a supported command in Mathix. Um, nope, didn't get away with that either. We can, I guess we can stop printing the angle now. We don't really need that one anymore. Um, okay. So the question is, can we show both of these graphics at once? And there is a way to do this in Mathematica that may or may not work here. And that is we can call this G1, call this, we can assign variables, call this G2, put semicolons after both. So now it should not print out anything because we have assigned and used semicolons. We have not actually tried to print anything. And it's good. So it does nothing really well. So now I could do a show, but I, I might be able to get away with just this a list that con consists of two graphic elements. And then presenting that list, yeah, that's that's correct. It's not great, though. It's not what I wanted exactly. Um, so now that I have them defined, let me see if I can do this. I don't think this is going to work either. Yeah. Um, Not crazy about that, uh, and I'm pretty sure I can't script that. So, well, if we're gonna go crazy, we might as well go super crazy. No, I, I thought putting a new line in the list would um, would help display it. Okay, let's see. If making a table will help. No, that did not help. I actually. I think I need an iterator for a table. Yeah. So I could say... <laughs> um, actually, I'm pretty sure that's not going to work. Um, there, is a, there is something called a grid view. I don't know if it's supported here, though. Um, yeah, it's not a lot of math doesn't support a lot of these functions. So one thing we can do is we could flip the order. We could actually just, you know, print out G2 and show it and ignore G1 for now, uh, which might be the only way to do this um, that I can think of. Unless, can I set image size for G1? Okay, let's try it. Let's see if we can... Um, um, no, not sphere. Disk. Zero, zero, 001 so this should be some nice graphics no of course it can't be and I meant to do this here oh and I think I need to close off my um, so hang on this is disk zero, zero, 001 close off the disk close off this yeah well it's not nice but it is working um, image size to this is something you can do with Mathematica. Let's see if you can do it. Oh, yeah! Bitchin'. Uh, awesome. So now we can just maybe, if we're lucky, change the image sizes here. Uh, so graphics, 
Uh, and I think image size comes after all the graphics themselves. You have to sort of put it in a separate. Um, you have to put it in a separate. It's a directive. It's not really part of the. Uh, it's not really part of the graphics. So it's the second argument and further. That's a sort of a mathematical convention. If you add arguments that are beyond what it expects, it treats those arguments as options. It's not really a bad um, way of doing things. Oops, nope, not here. Image size to 800 by 600. Image size to 800 by 600. And hopefully, even this will print even when it's inside of a inside of a list. It will preserve my my sizes. And the, when I said it, I don't even believe it. That that's just freaking strange, isn't it? Is that 800 by 600? I don't know. Um, let's try 800 by 800. Though I'm getting suspicious now that. This image size has nothing to do with why it's sort of warped like that. I think it's just trying to fit stuff in. Yeah. So while it's theoretically... Po oh, I, I should probably reload this page. Um, it doesn't matter, though. Um, why is there a... There we go. This is the very first thing we do. Okay, so we're going to have to basically do G2 separately from G1 and only show one of them at a time. Not great but certainly not fatal to our purpose. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and clear this out uh, and do... And now I kind of wish I hadn't done that. Uh, BC Eclipse Diagram... Oh, it's actually just... That was fun. Okay, so we're just going to cut and paste. God willing, and... Yeah, maybe in this case the image size doesn't need to be this huge, though. So we will we will undo that. Um, and I guess we should undo it for the other one, too. Whoa. Just for consistency. So, one more time. Okay, and we could probably make it a little bit bigger, but this should be sufficient. So, um, what we're going to be... D oh, actually, we don't even need the black lines here. We need... Um, so we do need the sun and the moon, sorry, but we don't need the black lines. So let's get the sun and the moon back. Red moon at night. Sailors go frickin' crazy. I think we only need the purple line. That's what this does. Uh, no, we probably need the black line too. Um, sorry, we need the one of the black lines, that is this one right here. So, I think this is what we want. Okay, nope, those are not the ones we want. We want the, uh, so that's like the one I missed is the one we need. Um, so it's this one. It's the one that goes from the moon to the sun. Okay, maybe, I don't know. I've gotten it wrong ten times. Eleventh time is the charm. Okay, fantastic. So, what we know is the angle we're going to measure here. And I might even do it on the other side just to be funky. Okay, so now we need the line that connects um, the, uh, the uh, cone point, which is... Have we actually defined the cone point? Yeah, we have. The cone point... And the center of the Earth, which I'm pretty sure is uh, EXEY. Um, and I guess we'll go back to black for that. Okay. So we can we know what this angle is here. We know this angle, which I could actually put in if I was really feeling clever. Um, we know that angle because we can measure that angle. What we want to know is the angles between the edges of the planet. So, um, and the question here is, if I were to widen this angle, um, what's the, I think the line from here to here has to be a tangent line for it to be maximum to the angle. It has to be, um, 
uh, it has to be perpendicular it has to yeah it has to hit the tangent line here um, which means this value here is going to be R uh, and it has to be perpendicular to this line and this value here will then be um, unknown but the angle we will know it from the R over the distance to the center and unfortunately I'm not sure I want to draw all that so so this says if we're outside of the cone, if we're out, the cone point is outside of the planet, we can get a we can get the angle to the center and then add plus or minus the arc sine of r, the radius, over the hypotenuse, which is the distance itself. We don't need to know what the uh, the we can figure it out. We don't actually need to know what the length of this uh, perpendicular is. And I'm thinking I'm pretty sure that's correct. I'm just beginning to wonder now though. Is it perpendicular to this, or is it perpendicular to to this? Um, so we want want to make this angle as big as possible. So we're, let's say we're increasing this angle. Um, yeah, it does have to be a tangent line. It cannot be just perpendicular to this, um, because then it would it wouldn't it wouldn't touch. So yes, it w it will be perpen. This is going to be a tangent line, which means it's going to be perpendicular. To uh, to the if I were to draw the radius here, it would be perpendicular to that radius, um, and therefore this would be a right angle here. Not this won't be a right angle. This would be a right angle here. I'm kind of thinking I want to draw it now. Um, which means this angle will be opposite over hypotenuse, not opposite. Okay, so so it will be the arc sine of that. Okay, again, we have a really good test here going. So I think I put this on playground.c. At some point, we do need to move some of this stuff into the BC lib because it, it is pretty, um, uh, it is pretty, uh, pretty generic. So let's see. Um, okay, so we're doing all of the making all these nice calculations, the umbral data. So now I think what we're going to say, if the cone point is uh, V sub Earth, okay, so, and I think we have a lot of this stuff already. Um, and I think the only concern we had is if the point is, is inside the Earth, we necessarily have an eclipse, but we can't use the formula we had, because if you're inside the, if you're inside the Earth, uh, you know, you can go in any direction and still remain in the Earth. In fact, there's no way to not, you know, any line you draw will remain within the Earth. It's only if you're outside that this uh, we have to worry about this little fudging. So let's look over here, and uh, here goes it. Okay. So that is the arc sine. So that's that length. So I guess the question is: Is the distance between the umbral point and the uh, center of the Earth uh, greater than or less than the radius? So we will. Um, we will, let's see, and I think we can just figure that out here, because we do print the V norm of dist. Uh, so we just need to compare that to um, the Earth radius. And it's very rare that it's going to be, uh, that it's going to be less, by the way. Um, in fact, it might not happen at all in the year. Um, so let's see. Uh, I just want to kind of run this again to see, because to remind myself what kind of output we're getting. And I didn't need to run uh, make again, because the program was working fine. Let's see what sort of run. Okay. So, um, okay, so this shows that the distance vector is 340, but the Earth's radius, wow. Oh, 635, so it's still pretty huge. Um, let's see how small that gets. 44. Um, so on a day-by-day -day basis, the fifth that gets it down to 44,000, still much bigger than the, the Earth's radius. Um, and I don't think that's going to be an issue. I don't think it's ever going to be, like, super close to the Earth. Um, we need to check for that case, but I think we're okay if we... 711, 634, coming back down again. And the only time it might hit is if we happen to hit, because we're still not even looking... We're looking at the beginning of each day, which is... Um, uh, which is um, not the same as looking at, we, we're not even looking for a minimum of dist. Okay, so now, 
if we know that um, okay so this is the uh, this is the earth's radius so we know the um, the umbral angle um, okay and we know the umbral angle I don't know why we need this this is between dist and the umbral vector um, oh no right right this is the uh, this is the uh, this is between the Earth and the purple line that we saw earlier, uh, between the purple line and the center of the Earth, uh, because dist goes from there to there, okay. Um, and then the Earth radius. So what, we, what we're sort of looking at is the, um, we want to compare the umbral angle itself to the sum of Vsat plus or minus EAR. So um, where are we doing that? VSEP plus or minus CAR, that's the UA printing. So, um, yeah, so it looks here like the, the VSEP is, is, I think we need to go back to another earlier in our little data thing here. Um, okay, so what I'm seeing here, the vector separation between dist and the umbral vector. Um, I am so tempted to convert this to degrees, um, and I think I might actually do that. These numbers are like far too big. 2, 1.66, 1.4, so it should get down to 1.3, 1.17, 1.04, 0 0.92, 0 0.80, 0 0.68, 0 0.566, and 0 0.446, 0 0.32, come on, 0 0.20, 0 0.08414, 0 that is really tiny. Uh, 0 0.003, and then I think that's going to be the minimum we can get out of it. So the minimum occurs on January 20th, um, 2000, and let me close off some of these tabs we don't need, but I do want to get the one, wow, not even this one. What is this? GeoGebra is good. We'll keep that. Uh, we also need this thing here. We're going we're gonna to do a little bit better job of getting this. So what happens on the uh, 20th that makes the angle, the dist angle, really small? I'm hoping it's a new moon. If it's not, we're really uh, we're really kind of screwed. It's a full moon. Okay. So. That means um, so during a new moon, this angle should be very small. During a full moon, this angle would be uh, very large because the moon would be over here, and we'd be measuring here. Oh no, actually, it might be very small then too. Hmm. Um. Because it would be if the moon were um, over here, we would just keep drawing this vector out here, and it would still be a relatively small angle to the center of the of the Earth. So that's, and I'm thinking there's a lunar eclipse on that day too. So that's why this is so small. Okay. So that's another case I didn't consider where you have a full moon, and the angle is still pretty small. And uh, but there's no obscuration because the obs because the the cone, uh, which we had earlier, um, is sort of goes beyond the Earth. Um, yes, because the cone. Okay, I see what's wrong. The cone that I drew earlier. I'm going to bring up G1 again. Right, and we're going to take a look. There's a problem with this cone. The way I've drawn the cone, if you're right here, it says you're in the umbra, but you're not because you have because th you're not even in front of the moon. The umbra really starts here at the center or at the edge of the moon, center of the moon, and going further. So we actually need to cap the cone uh, at this point, and we haven't done that because uh, you do need to be. Otherwise, there's no obscuration. This is just the uh, this is just sort of null space here. 
Um, and then also, by the way, if you go past the edge here, you're no longer in the umbral cone, but I think we're okay with that part. The part we're not getting here is that the umbral cone ends at the moon. So the question is, how do we, um, how do we account for that? Uh, how do we account for the fact that we are in the, um, we are with, within the shadow of the moon, not, not somewhere out here? So if we are out here, one thing we could say is um, the angle, I'm, I'm seeing if we can do it from angles. The angle, the angle here, here the angle. Yeah, so if you're here, the angle is going to be pretty broad. If you're going to be here, the angle is going to be pretty small. But I don't know what the limits are for the, uh, for the angle there. Um, I want to say 90 degrees. I want to say if it's beyond 90 degrees, you're... So if you're right here, uh, if you're below here, the angle will be not 90 degrees. It'll be something else. Um, I mean, the angle between you and the moon... Oh, okay, maybe that's not how we have to do it. So the angle from here to here to here is 90 degrees. The angle from here to here to here is obtuse. Okay, that might be the way to do it. Uh, and then if you're over here, though, the angle is going to be acute uh, because you're not quite past the moon. So, okay, so what we need to do is we need to look at the, um, the angle between, f as measured from the moon, the eclipsing body, uh, the angle to the Earth and the angle to the sun. If that angle is obtuse, we're in this situation. If that angle is acute, we're in the situation where uh, it's not an eclipse. So let's see if we can get that. So that should be, um, so it's moon earth. So a lot of these uh, we've already defined. Uh, for example, we've already defined the vectoral line, which is already going from the moon to the sun. I don't know if we've defined the angle from the middle of the moon to the earth. That might be the one angle we need that we don't already have. Let's take a quick look here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we get the positions, we get the radii. Uh, we get the umbral data, which is the umbral vector, the umbral point, the umbral angle. Um, we get the ace. Uh, you know what? I don't think we can. We don't compute that. Uh, awesome. So it gives us another. Um, we'll call it EM just to make our life hell. Um, for Earth Moon, and that's going to be a vector subtraction. And let's see. Uh, from Earth to Moon. And since we're doing angles, I don't think it matters which direction we go in. And we'll call it, we called it EM. Okay, so now we want the angle, the VSEP, between EM, that's that, and, and the, uh, and we're just looking at angles, so it doesn't really matter uh, where, th so this and this, we want to know the angle between those two. Um, so that's EM, and I think adding to our wonderful uh, list of things we're printing out that are fairly useless, um, we're going to say VSEP C, um, the umbral vector. And we're going to clean this all up if you're if you're worried. Um, so you know we're not going to keep this code all in playground. This is just sort of testing out right now between the umbral vector and the Earth Moon vector. And so now I really do need to remake. Hopefully that worked, but we'll be able to tell pretty quickly if it didn't. It looks like it did not, because I'm getting only three numbers after uh, after UA. So playground. Oh. Did I not save? Oh, no, because I actually need to print the fourth one. I am so smart. Okay, so now we decided that uh, we were looking at when the angle was really close, but we wanted to see what this uh, this third angle, the VSEP angle, was, and um, and we found that this angle became really small on I wish twentieth I think is when we said it was going to be. Uh, I mean we can look at it obviously. We're looking at this number here to see when it becomes really small, and I think the twentieth is when we said it's going to happen. And I'm wrong. It's the nineteenth. Uh, no, it is the twentieth. Okay. And at that point, this angle looks like it's acute. Uh, I don't really, well, actually, it's fairly obvious this angle is less than pi over 2. So in this case, what we're saying is this would be a case where 
uh, the Earth is over here somewhere and it's not an eclipse. So for it to be an eclipse, we do need it to be... So that we're going to continue and we're going to look... Hopefully this angle becomes really small again during the new moon. So we're expecting like in 15 days this number will become... So it's going up, 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 up. 0 0.38, 0 0.50, 0 0.61, 0 0.72, 0 0.84, 95 goes beyond... Th these are radians, so these are not... These can go beyond 1. 1.59, 1.85, That's a hell of a drop. Goes from 2.86 to um, 1.81. Wow. And I'm afraid this is going to be the next new moon this is coming down to because we're measuring the angle kind of funny. Uh, 180, da, 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 da. 49, da, 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 37, and it, I'm almost sure this is going to be uh, another, uh, wow, point zero zero 0.002, that is actually, I think, within an eclipse. 49, which minus 31, so it's February the 18th, which I'm pretty sure is going to be a, uh, uh, actually, we want this one to be pinned, not this one. February 18th, which infers another full moon. Okay, so whatever we're doing here, we're measuring one of the angles incorrectly, and um, that might be because I earlier put in a minus sign that I didn't really want to put in. So, um, I think it was more correct like this. Um, um, so this is the mathematically correct way of doing it, is this. So it would be nice if the mathematically correctly w correct way, and because changing BC lib doesn't change anything for the make, we need to do that. We need to make a tiny change to the actual file, even though we haven't really changed it at all. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our 20th day here. On the 20th day, um, Well, that is really, really awesome that we got it that small. Um, but now this number becomes too big, and I think that actually is because I need to reverse my vector here. Uh, that is because my Earth-Moon vector needs to be my Moon-Earth vector. And if this keeps going, by the way, I'm going to actually start drawing arrows. If I can't figure this out, which some people said I'm, I will never figure this out, but anyway. Let's go into the 20th day. Here we go. On the 20th day, this value is insanely small. I'm kind of worried. Um, and at some point I'm going to get a diagram that says what all of these are. I mean, I might, I might you know, use points instead of using uh, little potatoes or whatever. I might say angle A, A, B, C or whatever, but but we are going to get this. Um, so let's see. Okay, so this is good actually. This is what we want exactly. What we want uh, small angle, but it's acute. It's obtuse. Uh, it's acute, so we we don't have an eclipse. So now, if we did this correctly, wow, that angle is really really tiny. And what is that angle that I'm measuring there? That is the separation between the distance and the umbral vector. Um, okay, I'll believe it for now. And we're going to wait for that to get minimal again. Going down again, 1256, 1136, 972, no, wow, 770, 538, 285, almost zero, on the 35th day, which is going to be like February the 5th. And in this case, this angle is hugely obtuse, which means we do have a possibility of an eclipse, uh, of a solar eclipse on February the 5th. So let's take a look here. Uh, at least we have a new moon. That's good. Good. So we're, we're, we're doing better here. Um, so now... So now the question is actually whether um, 
have no idea what the question is. No. Uh, the question is whether the um, the uh, the v separation between dist and the umvec um, is if you subtract from it whether you stay within the umbral angle. So you take this sucker, subtract this sucker, and ask if it's bigger than this sucker, which it is, which it, it is, which means there is no, um, there's not quite an eclipse at the exact time that we're looking at. There's no solar eclipse, which is actually, which is actually okay, because I don't think there was a solar eclipse at midnight at Greenwich Mean Time. It might have occurred at another point during the day. Um, and instead of doing this the correct way, why don't we test that theory by just going through the 35th, the uh, 35th day, a lot slower. Um, without actually getting rid of it. So i equals 35, i less than 36, i plus equals, oh, let's go, let's do 100 iterations, and just to see if we can, if we get this right, we're actually pretty excited, then we can, then we can actually sort of move on. I mean, we're not going to, we could. So the day, the day should now be a floating point number. I think I'm okay with that, though. 33, 33. Okay, not good. Actually, I think there's a problem here. And I think the problem is... Oh, one of the problems is I needs to be a double. This needs to be a, a double multiplication. And uh, where I print I, I need to use a double. And I can't use a uh, floating point anymore. I need a floating point. can't use um, an integer. Okay, now let's see if that helped. Probably not. Oh, it did. Okay. So, 3, 2, 3, 0, 2, 9, 2, 8. Uh, and at this point, according to me, 2, 2 plus 2, 6, so this would be sort of the beginning of the eclipse would occur uh, at point 4 of the day. But let's see if we can find the maximum of the eclipse. 2, 6, 2, 8, 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7. Oh, wow. Back to 2, 8. So this would be the point of maximum eclipse, 0 0.08 into the day, which, thanks to our handy dandy calculator, 0 0.08 into a day is... I need to fix that. I'm going to make a note. Doing fix calc alias. That's close enough. About, so about UT 200, we would expect the eclipse to occur. So eclipses for the year 2000. And... Partial solar eclipse, good, good, good so far. Let's take a look at this. Zoom. Um, no, our, our UT is off a bit. Um, phase one sh should be, the contact should have been at 1055, uh, and actually we need the umbral contact. Geometric greatest eclipse at 12 hours, not at... Um, Oh wait, actually, I'm sorry. Um, yes, I think the uh, the uh, zero point of ET is actually noon at the 2000. So this actually is um, 1.92, and we are saying which would be two hours, which would be 14 hours, uh, which is uh, pretty close to when the eclipse actually occurred. And again, don't worry, we're going to do a lot more with this, so we're not uh, well. Actually, we're off by a bit. So hang on, let me check this again. Uh, 0.08 times 24, um, yeah, we are off by a bit. Um, but we're in the general ballpark here, I think. Uh, so we've got like P4, I guess, is where we're hitting. But we're in the general ballpark. So now, as promised, I'm going to actually try to do this, um, this whole diagram. Oh, God. Am I... This whole diagram, but I'm going to try to make the, make it the points clear, and I think I'm going to go ahead and make everything um, non-discual. Um, so I think what we're going to do here is, um, and we're going to make the umbra look correct, uh, and we're going to make the moon and the sun have little dots in them, and the earth, and I think we can do this. And so this is just going to be purely decorative if you were looking for something useful. Um, you're not even on the right stream, buddy. Okay. 
Wow, that, that's pretty good. Not what I need, but it was pretty good there. Let's see what this is. Eclipse Diagram Mathics. Okay, so we're going to call this G3, and that is what we're going to print also. So G3 equals, I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with, is this G2 or this is G2? So let's start with the G2, and we'll tweak it. One good programming tip I wouldn't know, but here's a bad programming tip. If you can cut and paste code and then modify it, that's a lot easier than, uh, than you know, thinking for yourself. And you would think that's sort of a joke that I'm making, but it's not. So I'm going to point here as well. Um, because usually a lot of this code is going to look really similar. So if you can copy it and then tweak it, great. Although if you're smart, you would actually kind of try to figure it out yourself. I'm not smart, so I won't do that. Okay. Now the sun is looking a little bit too light colored when it's not a disc so we're going to pump that up to orange I wonder if there's a way to change the background color in mathematics because I really want to do that so let's briefly look for that mathix change background color uh oh hello um It's got to be in Mathix. Uh, okay, hang on. So we might there might be a way to do this. Okay, so <laughs> so there is a background. We just I don't know how we can change it though. Background automatic. We might be able to do something with that. All right, so let's see if we can change background. And again, this will be a directive um, to green. We're not going to use that, but it's going to be noticeable. I did not notice a change here. And it might be that I want background color here. And the more I think that's going to be a, a non-understood directive. Okay, not what I wanted. Um, background, background color. Let's see if I can get completion to do half my job here. Probably not. Oh, actually, we are running Mathix in in here. So back, background. So let me ask, what is? Nice. No idea what the hell it means. Um. But at least we know what it is. It's background, it's all lowercase. So let's try this. Um, that's really the closest thing we have to a chance of working. <gasps> Be still my beating heart. I don't know if that's the correct thing to say there. Okay, cool. So we can change the background. I think we're also going to bump up the image size a little bit without going crazy. So we want a background of black so the yellow will show up better on it. And because space is black although you could probably debate that. Image size, I think we decided 800, but we'll try 600 by 600, see what that does. Yeah, for some reason when you go past, uh, so I guess the aspect ratio doesn't like it here, and that's way too big anyway. Um, And our lines are going to have to be white now instead of black, but that's actually okay. So let's see, that is stretched out too much in the long direction. So 600 by 400 is probably the... 400 by 600 by... 600 by 400, I think, is the correct, uh, correct dimensional thing you need to do here. No, it's not. So I'm going to have to make it even shorter. Of course, part of it is we're we're looking at a very thin part of the of the of space, in the final frontier. So I want to make this actually longer but tighter. Let's see what this does. Yeah, not quite. What I, I'm gonna have to make this a little bit. Um, now I've gone too far in the other direction. 
I'm going to have to make this a little bit higher. Um, let's see if 8 to 3 is the... See, now this doesn't even seem like it's a good ratio, though. And so, of course, that's the one that works. Um, well, I could use a little bit more padding on the earth there, but maybe I don't care. And I'm going to have to make this... Yeah, the way I have it right now, the, uh, the, um, the umbral point's not showing up. But uh, we can... Maybe fix that. Mm, I don't want to go wider than that, so... We'll make this two-thirds, we'll make this two-thirds. 600 by 200. And I just realized that I probably didn't do what I just said I did. Okay, this is looking good. Um, and I think I can fix this by making the earth light blue. And uh, that is a very tight boundary, though. I'm not happy with. And I wonder if I can change the thickness of the of the um, of the pen. So, yes, I can. All right. <laughs> and I think I can even just use the word thick, because um, now we're just drawing outlines. So um, let's see what this does. You know, I could actually just test all this stuff in in um, in the in the actual uh, browser, which I might do. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Um, except the lines need to be white now instead of uh, instead of black. But I okay, that is so. I could use thickness also, but thick seems to work. So they they've done a pretty good job with 2D graphics and 3D. They really kind of spaced it. Uh, let's go ahead and make our lines white now, and the purple line will become oh I don't know pink. Somewhere I messed up. Is pink not an ob observable color? It is not. So I can do RGB color, and I happen to know what pink is. Actually, I'm not sure I do. RGB color, it's sort of the... Uh, red is 25500, 0, 0, so 255128, 128 puts in a half shade. That should actually be pink. Um... It doesn't seem like that at all, actually. Because yeah, they tried to change this line's color to... Um, hmm. um, and the only thing I'm wondering is if I need to do it like this to enclose it in braces. And that actually might be a Mathematica thing, too. So... Okay, it's complaining about something. Yep. Um, so I guess we'll make this orange for right now, but we, we reserve the right to come back to this. Um, that's actually not the line I wanted even, but okay, cool. Um... Okay. Let's start labeling some of these points, I think. Um, I need to get rid of the whatever's black needs to be not black. We'll make it orange for now, and we reserve the right to change that later. Okay. And I actually think if we're drawing the centers of the planets, we might not need to make the line two different colors. Okay, so now we're going to actually start putting some points things in there. We're going to put some text in there for the first time. Um... And let's make sure our text is a very... I'm almost sure it is. Uh, so text is going to give us some... That's probably not good. We need to do like... Okay, well, let's see if we can put some text in here. So text at zero, zero... Um, no, uh, text, yeah, at zero, zero... It just says hello for testing. It's one of the nice things about testing. So you can get away with anything. Yes, something is wrong. 
Awesome. So we're not using text correctly. And in Mathematica, you can do question text. Um, text. Oh, that's not good at all. OK. Um, you know what? Maybe. See, I really don't think this is going to work. But in theory, if you do like this, it would be nice if the interface came up with like a little bit of help. Like, what can I do here at, at text? Uh, but apparently not. Um, so I'm going to go back to the manual that we don't have. Actually, we do have the manual somewhere. Um, or we're just going to say mathics, graphics, text. Again, this might be the poorest feature of mathics is that it doesn't... Um, that it does not have inline documentation, which would not be hard to add, actually. I think I mentioned it. I think there's a request out for that that I have. But since no one's actually using it, no one's, no one's paying attention to my, my request. Let's take a look here. Oh, so it's the other way out. So I almost had it, actually. And that might not show up because it's going to be sort of at the very edge of our... That's some big ass text, um, and the reason I just re realized is because all of everything we're printing is at a very tiny, um, very tiny level. So I think text size. Ooh, text. Come on, give me a text size here. Um, I can maybe use small. Oh, text. Am I going to die on this? Am I going to die on this graphics directive here? If small works, we might be able to actually fix the size to be what we want it to be. Uh, but if that doesn't work, we're kind of screwed. And apparently you can't use small at all as, as, as okay, so... Text structure might be what I'm looking for. Um, all right, let's go back to our friend Google. Size. Um, and I think we can be obnoxious and actually make text size a required thing in this Google. That seems like it's going to work. Um, I'm becoming concerned that the word mathematics is not mathics is not going to be in these, uh, even though I'm, I said it's supposed to be. Or mathics has a different meaning that has nothing to do with this. Yep, not looking good. All right, so and I'm going to just see if text size is the way to go. Uh, we're down to 12 results, by the way, so... So, I d we do know it has a text structure, so maybe text structure is the, uh, the magic thing we're looking for. Oh, um, well, we also moved this manual. I think I have it saved locally, but anyway. Uh, text structure... Turns the grammatical structure of text as form. That's not what we want. Um... So let's look for text this. Um, and can we get rid of this thing? I hopefully, because I it's hurting us. Um, okay, in this case I think I can actually sort of work around that if I, do I have events running already or something? I do not, but I can bring it up. So that's not too much of a big deal. So I do know we downloaded the Mathematica the MathX manual here. And I can bring it up, and and events is actually pretty good about uh, pretty good about doing stuff. So let's go ahead and find text here. Um, okay, good. Text draws text. We can probably make this bigger because I know we are sort of limited to. Um, let's see, see if we can say fit page. Oh no, that's worse. Fit width. 
Why don't we just let it choose by itself how much big it wants to be? Draws text in graphics. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, let's see what this is. So absolute thickness. Uh, but none of that seems to apply to the text itself. That's just for the lines. Okay. Oh, here it is. Um... Yep, does not look like that's helping us. That's not changing the text size is what we're looking for here. I'm going to be sort of annoyed if the text is at a fixed size. It produces a tiny image. None of this is giving us more information about text, though. Context, which we don't care about. Text. So what, what are some other things we could do with text here? So text, text position, text cases. So position seems to be the closest thing uh, to what we want. It's that, again, is not really what we want, but let's see what that does. Text position. Returns the positions of the element of type form in text. Oh my god. That is actually something that deals with text. Okay, so let's look at the graphics. Maybe there's a graphics directive. Um, that lets us, uh, you know, just a general graphics directive that lets us uh, lets us change the size of whatever is coming after it. Let's do this. Represents a graphic. Okay, good. Yes, yes. Rectangle, circle. Nice, very nice. Even their own example doesn't work. Gray level, green, gray. Oh, so they're actually going to list them here, I think. Um... Okay, so th th there's actually a fairly extensive section here on graphics. Absolute thickness, arrow, which we're going to use arrows, by the way, instead of lines at some point. Um, Bern Bernstein, I thought there were bears. Bernstein basis, Bezier curve, black, blend, blue. We're looking for anything that controls the size. Directive. Okay, so let's see if there's a small, there is a small directive, so we can at least use that. Back in the olden days, we had to actually do something like this so we could make all of our, make all of our um, windows available without having to jump between them. So we could quickly go to whichever window we wanted without uh, screwing up the others. So let's see if the small directive helps us here. Wow. It does not. Let's see if we get rid of it, if it helps. Um, well, at least we can print again. Um, I wonder if they have a size directive. I'm, I'm pretty sure Mathematica does. No, they don't have a size directive point size maybe point size yeah there we go uh, this won't work either but it, it, it you know point size 10 maybe and if we're ver very unlucky that's the default so we're not going to change anything but let's see what that does I like the way that changed the whole color of the thing too so point size 10 is way too big um, point size 1 and that's because how Mathematica does filling And I think point size actually only works for points. And thus is uh, totally... I, I'm actually sort of confused as to how it can affect things that come before it. But, um, again, this is mathics, not Mathematica. So we deal with that kind of thing. So let's see if this at least... Yeah. So whatever the hell point size does, it does not appear to affect does not appear to affect uh, text. Oh, and now it apparently doesn't do anything if I make it that small. Well, that was not fun. 
Maybe font size. Some of the font directives will help out here. Font color. Okay, that's not what I want. Um, so in Mathematica, you could do that and get the um, font color now. Text. Graphics. There's a lot of graphics directives here. But I don't know if any of the ones I want. And by the way, we've been going for um, an hour. Okay. So I'm going to call it in a few minutes. I'm getting hypoglycemic. It would be amusing for me to die on screen, but it would... I'm not don't even have a video camera, so we're not going to do that. Um, face form. What does face form do? See, they're not even documented. Freaking piece of shit. Filled font color is an option for style. Okay, so style might be the thing we're looking for here. Um, style, style, style. Uh, so I think you can actually say style 2, and that'll change what the... Ooh, style table style so graphics style disk okay that's that's nice um uh, i'm going to cheat and see how i do it in mathematica actually actually i'm not going to cheat i'm going to uh, go ahead and call the stream uh because hypoglycemia is getting bad enough that i need to do something about it so thank you for watching the stream uh goodbye for now Hopefully we'll come back uh, later and uh, do something interesting. Probably not, though.